All right, so today in the shop we are building a white oak entertainment center. Got a bunch of three quarter inch plywood, some quarter inch plywood and half inch plywood, as well as a bunch of hardwood for the face frames and doors and drawers. So all the plywood's been processed, we've got it all cut to, to size, we've got all the dados cut in panels, and uh, some pocket holes cut to attach the face frame to the front. Um, I did try something different on this cabinet, it's, it's meant to have a freestanding look, uh, this entertainment center I should say, not a cabinet, um, but this entertainment center. And so I've left the little feet on the, uh, the sides of the plywood, um, just to help give it a little bit more support and not just have it all relying on the face frame and side panels. So uh, next up is a glue up. Um, got some spacers here on the workbench to help me elevate the, uh, the components while I clamp them up. Glue them and screw them together. Gonna be doing it in, in different sections. Start with the, um, the middle and the bottom, add the top, and then we'll add the sides on at the very end uh, and try to keep everything flush as we go. Here we go. a couple of biscuits to help with alignment between the face frame and the case and then the rest is just some clamps uh, and then a bunch of pocket screws it was nice that that center section was drawers so I could conceal some some pocket screws in there next I'm turning my attention to the side panels and this is the vertical style and it's getting a stopped groove uh, for the floating panel I typically do this on the router table but uh, I thought this time I'd try on the table saw since it's faster and quieter um, the one downside is that you have to square up the groove with the chisel when you're done. So I did get a little excited when I was cutting grooves and accidentally cut a groove in both the top and the bottom of uh, what would be the uppermost and lowermost uh, horizontal rails. And so here I am fixing that mistake by filling them back in with a piece of wood. That'll be hidden. Uh, don't really see them. One will be facing the floor and one will be underneath the top. So I've gotten through resawing all the panels um, into, uh, of course, thinner stock to, I, I shouldn't say panels, resawing the lumber to make panels. And um, after resaw, let them sit for a while, they have developed a bit of a cup um, kind of in this, uh, on the freshly uh, exposed face, whether it's due to imbalance of moisture, internal tension, doesn't really matter. Um, but I have to fix it somehow. And so, um, some of these boards are out by almost a, a sixteenth of an inch across about a seven inch, uh, seven inch wide board. So I I can't just 
glue them up uh, and then kind of force them into shape in the frame. I, I, it's a little, it seems like a little too much to me. So I have two options, or I can try to um, mill down, you go back to the joiner and mill one face flat-ish, uh, run through the planer, clean up their end. The one problem with that is that I don't have a whole lot of thickness to play with here. Um, I, uh, I think I screwed up in only about four quarter material probably should have bought a five quarter to make sure I could get a quarter inch panel um, out of it. So um, one option, join it. Um, my other option is to actually cut the board in half, uh, you know, cut it down this way, and then they'd be really flat, and so they would take almost no cleanup at the joiner, and uh, I could definitely yield the full, almost the full thickness I have now. Um, I'm contemplating which one to do. I uh, I would really like to not cut the board in half. So I think I'm going to try just light pass on the joiner. It's I was I was just doing a little deflection test here to see how much how much force it took to flatten this panel out. Um, not a lot. Uh, so I think the frame should be able to hold it in place, I think. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go the, the path of a light light touch on the joiner just to flatten it up a little bit, run through the planer, clean it up, then do my then glue then glue up my panel, and um, we'll uh, we'll go from there. And if I do screw up, I think I have a plan for that too. If it ends up too thin, I think I have a plan for that as well. So we'll see how it goes. So one of the uh, more stressful parts about a stained project is actually choosing the stain itself and making sure it matches the, the client's expectations on um, kind of color, grain, things like that. Because um, with building and stuff, you can usually fix or correct or redo. With finish, it's a little bit more uh, permanent, I'd say. Sure, you can sand off finish and redo it, but um, for things that have floating panels that you need to finish the panel first before you can glue up the panel, uh, you have to kind of push that, that finishing aspect further, further up in the project. And so that's where I'm at right now is I've got panels made, milled up, sanded, ready for a finish to be applied so I can finish the side panels of the cabinet. And so what I have here is samples um, for the client to look at. Um, from various pieces, I got plywood pieces, I've got some of the face frame pieces, some of the uh, more of the inner panel type pieces here, all with different stain variations on them, um, even, and not even just stain, some of them just have straight polyurethane, some have um, some green tinted uh, dye to help contrast a little bit of the red that's in some of the pieces of oak. Um, so this is why I laid out to the client. Um, and we did come away with a couple a couple selections here. Um, they're actually very similar. Numbers 18 and 26. So 18's here, and I think 26 is on the back of this one. Yep. So this is what we came away with. Number 18 and 26, where my thumbs are. Um, that's the same same process, but on two different pieces of lumber. One is more the face frame, rift and flats on, and then this is a a quarter sawn piece that some of the panels are made from. And uh, really all it is is it's, it's diluted green tint um, that helps kill a little bit of the red that's in there. Um, but it doesn't really uh, mask any of the other colors of the wood. It keeps it more natural looking, which is what she was going for. So now we have that figured out, I can continue on with the build, um, turning my attention to resawing another panel for the um, doors and drawer fronts as well as milling up the door and drawer uh, frames uh, um, so I can start working on them. So um, I'm gonna clean this, all these samples up here and um, 
we're going to get on to uh, resawing some panels and making some door parts. Here we go. This is my typical drawer construction. Um, rabbits that are later pinned with dowels. Plenty strong. Allows me to get a very accurate width in the door or the drawer as well. Now I'm doing the final sizing on the drawer fronts and doors. Um, I like to use a crosscut sled here because I have that one nice edge to reference and get 90 degrees to. And then I'll turn switch it over to the rip fence and rip it to final height. I have same process for the width of the drawers and doors as well. But that one typically is just the rip, rip fence for both sides. One thing I do spend a lot of time on, and I'd say even struggle with a bit, is, uh, is getting a really nice... Uh, glue line between long pieces like this um, you know the, these these boards are about five foot long and uh, trying to get a nice even joint between the adjacent boards has always been a bit of a struggle so I do spend a fair amount of time at the joiner uh, and bring those boards back and forth back and forth until I get all 
all the edges nice and nice and flush to each other before I apply glue in the clamps. So spraying clear polyurethane on film is, is very underwhelming. Uh, in person, it's a little more satisfying because you get the sheen. Uh, I did spray two coats in total uh, with the scuff sand in between. Um, after the poly dried, I reassembled everything, added the poles for the doors, and uh, made sure the top fit. Um, I added some slots to the top of the cabinet so those quarter-inch 20 bolts could go through and, and thread into the, uh, the thread inserts into the top. Uh, once I liked everything was adjusted and looking good, I disassembled it uh, for the last time and loaded it up in my vehicle. Took it to the client's house where I assembled the back um, and then add some adjustable feet to the very uh, center of the cabinet for added support. Overall, I love the way this project turned out. Uh, one of my one of my all time favorites so far. Um, if you liked the video, uh, please please hit please hit like. Uh, if you want to leave me a comment or a question, please do. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.